I think if we understood the incredible forgiveness of God that God extended towards us, it would deliver us from so much bitterness and anger. My wife and I were talking about it this morning as we were driving, and I said, I said to her, I said, you know, if, if I really understood the depth of God's forgiveness, I probably would not be reacting to other people. I probably would not waste my time judging other people. I probably wouldn't take any time to start looking at other people's faults if I truly understood the depth of God's forgiveness. In fact, if I really understood the depth of God's forgiveness, I would then want to forgive others. Because God forgave me a trillion, trillion things. What is it then to forgive someone of uncle? And you know what's interesting? When you and I forgive others, it removes the hatred, and, and you know what it does? It gives me the freedom to love. The freedom to love. You know, when that is implemented in a marriage, because you know sometimes in marriage you can have intense conversations. And when we hold things in our hearts, when we hold grudges in our hearts towards the other person, what we're saying in a sense is that, I'm not going to forgive you. God says, I have forgiven you so much. But when we do forgive, and we remove those things, again, we're free to love one another. We only hurt ourselves when we don't forgive. <coughs> This is what happened in Colossae. So what are the far-reaching implications of the power of the gospel? In other words, what happened as a result of receiving the gospel and understanding the grace of God? It changed their destiny. It gave them a new identity. Before they hated God, they were alienated from God, they were enemies of God, and now Paul turns around and says, saints, brothers and sisters in Christ, Faithful believers, children of God, their new identity. A new identity. And when they understood this, it transformed their hearts. And they had genuine love for all believers. Because the gospel brought everyone to the same place. You see, God treats all of His children in the same way. He loves all of His children in the same way. There is no discrimination. There is no prejudice. There is no favoritism because of the gospel. In Galatians 3.28 it says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter if you are rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you are smart or a little less smart. In Christ, we have the same value. God doesn't put one here and another one there. God doesn't think more of one and less of another. And if the gospel was really operating in our hearts, we also would be free of those things. You see, the power of the gospel speaks of God's ongoing work and transformation in our lives. It is a process by where we are being changed back to who we originally were designed to be, not only in our thoughts, but in our actions. But the reason you and I continually struggle in our relationship with God uh, and in many areas of our life is because the gospel has not gone from our head to our hearts. We understand it intellectually, but it has not changed the way we actually operate. So here we are in Christ, and we are struggling to understand that we are struggling to accept God's love. We are struggling to accept His, His words. We are struggling to accept who we are in Christ because it's not gone into the heart. But I have to say that, that I struggled even as a believer for five years to even understand the grace of God. But once we really meditate on the gospel, 
on this great salvation that God offers us, which, by the way, many of us have received. Once we really believe and trust in the truth of God's word, and we understand the depths of God's grace, and we let it take root, what do you think will be the fruit? Paul's prayer in verse 9 was that God would fill them with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, that the true gospel would encompass all of our life, the way we think about ourselves, the way we think about others, the way we view life, it changes the core of our being, our worldview. It changes what we value. And what we now think is most valuable and the worthy way to live. Before we used to think this way, but now when we met Christ, we think this way. We think differently about our life. So God's desire is to fill us with his wisdom and understanding. And when that happens, when it goes deep, then our lives, our commitments, our relationships, the decisions we make for our families, our future, our work, will all be in line with the priorities of the gospel. The whole message of God. Concerning the effect of the gospel in our lives, Tim Keller asks some provoking questions. He says, or asks, is the way we spend our money in line with the priorities of the gospel? Is our attitude towards the poor and the needy in line with the gospel? Is our sexuality in line with the gospel? Is the way we deal with our past, our sins and weaknesses in line with the gospel? Are our marriages in line with the gospel? Are our relationships in line with the gospel? Do we live for him? And we can ask the same uh, question when we consider our core values as a church. Is it evident that we value the things that we see in, the, in, in Colossians 1? Where Paul talks about the effects of the word of God. The all-encompassing gospel in verse 6. Are we walking in our new life, in our new identity, with the heart of God? Is it all in line with the gospel? We see community in verse 8. The outworking of the love of God for others through the Holy Spirit. Are we filled with faith and love for all the brethren? We see Paul's prayer that they would be equipped with all spiritual wisdom, understanding, and strengthened with all of God's glorious power. This is the desire, this is the value that we have in our church, that each one of you would be equipped to know God and trust in God and walk with God and be empowered by God to make it with God. And throughout the passage, we see the role that prayer played in enabling them to do the work of the Lord. And finally, in verse 10, we see the outworking of the gospel, the true gospel, in service. When the gospel truly transforms our hearts and minds, it says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord in every way. And your lives will produce every good fruit. All the while, growing in the knowledge of God. Do we value what God values? See, when you and I respond to the gospel, when you and I understand God's grace, the depth of God's grace, God will give us His desires and His ability to use our time, our talents, and our gifts in a way that honors God. And when that happens, when that happens, what is produced? Fruit. These young people are going to Romania uh, instead of going on vacation to Hawaii. They're going to Romania. <clears throat> And they are allowing God to take their lives, to be used for the gospel. What type of fruit do you think will come out of that? 
See, God desires that when we walk with Him, that we would be fruitful. This word in the Greek for fruitful means that we will actually reap the benefits of walking with God. We will experience it. We will know it. It will bless our hearts and our minds and our lives, our relationships, our families, our future. It is going to be fruitful. And this is what Jesus Christ desires in His church, in our lives. you desire that through this relationship with you, God, we would grow. We'd be fruitful. God, that we would value what you value. Your word. Lord God, how is it that we can say we say that we love you, but we don't love your body? We don't love the bride. God, we love that you don't desire that we walk through this life without your strength, without your wisdom. God, without your spirit, without your word. God, you give us everything we need for life and godliness. That's your promise. You want to equip us. So that, God, our lives will glorify you. At home, at work, wherever you have. And God, I pray that you would forgive us, me, if we've ever put less importance on the things that you deem so important, so vital for our walk with you. God, forgive me. God, that I would treat things so Flipping mirror with familiarity. God, I pray that in these coming days and weeks and years, Lord Jesus, that we will understand in a greater, deeper way your grace, not just the grace that saved me, but the grace that changes me, cleanses me, enables me. The grace that being acceptable to you and guarantee a home in heaven. And God, as we think about the community of your graces, and Lord Jesus, I we thank you. And God, we just commit this meeting to you. Lord, that through your spirit, once again, that you would remind us of an incredible relationship we have with you, which was made possible through the true gospel, and by the grace, by your grace. We thank you that we are your children, saints, brothers and sisters in Christ, beloved in you. In Jesus' name, amen.